Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to take a look at this rather new quadcopter from SEMA. It's the TF1001, as we can see here on the box. It also is known as a Hella Fury 360 Quad Rotor Sport Heli. So it has quite a bit of names and rather long names, sort of like a stunt quadcopter with a rather futuristic look. And we'll discuss that some more because it does have some pre-programmed, I guess you could say, stunts that you could call it. But again, this is from SEMA. It does also say here, as you can see, it's got those 12, it says stunts, but you know, at least four of those are just your 360 flip direction. So it's a little bit deceiving there. So let's take a closer look at the drone. As you can see, it's rather unique looking. It looks almost something like maybe out of a Terminator movie or something. It is a quad rotor or, you know, uh, quadcopter multi rotor uh, drone. But it's got the three of the sets of propellers are on top here and then it has the one that's uh, downward facing on the bottom. Now it only has one light which is a red LED here and I'll show you the on and off switches here on the bottom. Turn it on and it will flash until you bind it. It will also flash just like this whenever you reach the low uh, voltage cutoff alarm. Um, but overall pretty unique looking little quadcopter. Now, the battery is built in on the bottom so the charging port is here on the bottom so you can't easily remove it. I don't know the capacity of the battery though I do I'm certain it is a 1S LiPo that's inside of here. The flight time I got was close to nine minutes around two minutes of that was LVC so around seven minutes I got the LVC. I think I got around eight minutes and 50 seconds total flight time for this guy. Now the charger has a, a little light that comes on and then it goes out. Real common looking little two pin connector and that does plug in to the bottom right here. Let me see if I can get this into view. May not be easy to see because of the glare but right in here. And then you charge this guy up. The charge time in this was, I think was around 45 minutes or so before it was fully charged. Now they also give you, and this is unique, because you get some things with this quad coffee you don't usually get. And we'll go over that because you probably see one of them right on the table right now. This helipad, which we'll talk about in a minute. They also give you not only a, you know, your standard Phillips screwdriver, but they give you a set of four AA batteries for the controller. Now these are rather cheap, but still if you want to get a drone where you don't have to worry about buying anything to get it going, well, this is a drone for you because I've never seen a drone come with any batteries for the controller before. So that is kind of neat, obviously very inexpensive and not a deal breaker because you're used to buying batteries for these toy RC, but you know, if you want to buy something and not have to worry about looking for the batteries, well, this might be the drone for you. And then you've got your controller right here and this is a helipad. Let's look at the helipad first. It's really unique that it comes with a helipad. I've never seen a drone that comes with a helipad before. So this is rather unique. You think on a GPS drone you might see one, they don't even include them with those. Now this drone, a helipad is really not so necessary, but it's still rather neat. Now I'm not going to get the whole heli the helipad out here, but I will unzip it so you guys can see. It is a, because it'll fly open on me. I have the instructions I stuck in here as well. But it is orange on top and it is blue on the bottom. It gives you some stakes. You can use it drive it into the ground because as um, you know, these things are very easy to blow away. It's only about, you know, uh, I can't see my, my fingers here, but it's, it's not a full size uh, helipad like some of the larger ones. It's a bit smaller, but it's perfect size for this little drone. Now, I mentioned the instruction manual there. I, for some reason, did not get an English instruction manual with mine. Never seen it happen before, so somebody at the factory forgot to stick one in here. All I've got is this Chinese instruction manual. So I had to do some extra testing with this to kind of get the controls down because all this is is in Chinese. Now, I wouldn't be overly concerned because this is not something I've been four years. I've never seen this happen before. So I'm certain if you ordered this and you decided to want to buy it for some reason, I wouldn't worry about the lack of the instruction manual. But if you do, hopefully, and you did get this and you didn't have the English instruction manual, hopefully this review will help you answer some of the questions you might have about this drone because I had to do, do some extra testing. Now, this is a typical SEMA looking controller here. They even kind of went to this style a couple of years ago. Uh, the first thing you can see here is it does have altitude hold. It's a rather docile, like it's, it's what I just said, I use it flyer this drone is it does not have much pitch so even the highest rate has two rates 
is very little pit, so you cannot fly this drone outdoors if there's any wind at all. Just be aware of that now. If there's a little bit, if there's no wind at all, you can get by with it. This is really more of an indoor flyer, which is a bit of a problem because it's not super small, but it does control really well that I had almost no problems in a really confined area down here in my basement flying this drone around with only like one crash I think I had for the whole flight. It brakes rather good, but again, it's rather slow. It has a fixed yaw, so the yaw is the same speed no matter if you're low or high rate. But the yaw is just right to where that didn't really bother me that the yaw speed did not crease on this, on this guy. But again, don't try to fly it outside because even if the wind doesn't necessarily blow it around, it just can't fight the wind from the lack of pitch and it just doesn't have the ability to fight back and it does eventually drift away. So if you're a beginner, don't take this outside unless it's dead calm outside. So back to the, to the controller, you've got on this side here, you press in on this, this is your one and your two beeps for your or low and your high rate. This button you press in, you can use it to trim. It goes in trim mode, you can trim forward or reverse pitch, right or left roll if you need to trim the quadcopter. On the top here, this is your auto takeoff and your auto landing. In the rear, this is your 360 flips. Now you do have to hold this in while you press the direction on the stick here that you want to flip. You can't just press it, then press it like a lot of them. You actually have to keep holding this. And it does flip in all four directions, though it is a bit sloppy doing pitch, you know, front or back flips because of the length of the quadcopter. Right and left roll uh, flips, it does a really, really nice job. And then these two buttons are like these pre-programmed modes. Like you press this one and then right, left, or up or down, whichever direction, you know, four different programs. Same with the rear, up, right, left, down. It will do different pre-programmed, I guess you could call it stunts. But as you can see here, it will do like, um, as you'll see in the flight review, it'll do some spins, or it might do a up and down and dance. Uh, it may do, a, you know, just little things it does, little pre-programmed stunts, but they're not really too stunty, but they are stunts. But again, you just simply have to press these, and then you press in one of the different uh, pitch or roll directions, and each one is a pr different pre-programmed stunt. That's how you get four, you know, for this one, four, and your four flip directions you can do yourself, that gives you four, eight, 12 stunts. At least that's the way I determined it. Because again, I only have the Chinese instruction manual. But overall, again, this thing does fly really well, as long as you can fly it indoors. In a flight review we're gonna go to in a minute, I flew it in the garage. I tried to fly it outdoors and had to uh, abort that review because even though it was a very light breeze, it did kick up at times outside. It was rather consistent and the drone just struggled. I couldn't even get 360 flips because I couldn't keep it close to me to show it in the camera. So again, indoor flyer unless it's completely calm. So if you need a quadcopter that you could take outside, then this is not the drone for you. If you don't mind flying indoors, maybe you're a beginner, because this would be good for a beginner. You just want to fly it around your living room or in your garage, then this would be perfect. Just don't expect to be able to take it outdoors unless it's really, really calm. All right, guys, as you can see, everything comes with, it comes with quite a few accessories. Um, there'll be a purchase link to this down in the description if you're interested, because I do think it's worthwhile, as long as you can get it for a good price. I don't recall this very moment the price of this drone, but you know, this drone is something that if you can get it in the uh, $30 to $40 range, I think is a good deal. I want to think it's considerably more than that right now. Part of that's because of this helipad. These things typically sell for at least 10 or 15 bucks alone. So that's part of probably what's driving the price up. But if you get a good deal on this, I would recommend it. But don't pay, you know, as they say, an arm and a leg for it because, uh, you know, it's not like a quadcopter you can take outside and just fly around the backyard no matter what. Because as we said, it just can't handle any kind of wind. A lot of it's these ducted fan design, just kind of acts as a, you know, the wind gets up in there. But a lot of it also is just the lack of pitch. It, it just can't, it, it's not real sporty. All right, guys, that wraps up the table review for the SEMA TF-1001 Hello Fury 360. Let's head outside now to my garage for that flight review. So be right back. All right, guys, so let's take the SEMA TF-1001, otherwise known as a Hello Fury 360, you know, quad rotor, quad copter, stunt copter, whatever you want to call it out for its test flight. It has that very unique design with these um, three, uh, two blade props on top and the two blade single you know prop on the bottom and I mean, it flies really nice but 
Uh, one thing I've noticed is I did a, a, a second test flight earlier outside trying to film a review and it simply cannot handle any wind whatsoever. It doesn't necessarily get blown around as much. It just has so little pitch, even the highest rate, the pitch is about that much. And it just can't, it can't fight it. So every, even the slightest breeze today is not a very windy day. And it would end up over in the neighbor's yard and I had to abort the review. So as you can see, I'm gonna be doing the review here in my garage. So this is more of an indoor flyer. You can certainly fly it outside on an extremely calm day, a day where there's just zero wind. Uh, that's the only way I would feel comfortable flying this guy outside. Now, this footage looks a little bit different today. This is my first review where I'm using my DJ, DJI Osmo Action camera. I've got the rock steady on, so hopefully that levels out any head movements and bobbles. So we'll see how that works today. All right, so let's go. We'll take it up for the, the uh, test flight here. Now, of course, this it does come with a helipad, which is a nice little perk they included with this. I'm not going to mess with it here in my garage. I had it outside and put it down. And of course, the wind, the slight breeze picked it up and it's sort of floating around. So I'm not going to mess with that. So we'll take it up and we'll fly it around and we'll see how it it does. Um, there are pre-programmed stunts and then of course there's 360 flips. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll power all this on and I'll be right back and we'll fly it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'll launch it from the top of this, this cardboard boxes right here. So you guys can see they're down here. And it'll be a little easier to see the takeoff because I'm obviously in a rather confined area here in the garage. So the power is right here on the bottom. Switch that on. All you have is that red light. So thankfully, this drone is very easy to maintain orientation because of its unique design. So lack of LEDs is not a big deal, but that will start flashing like that whenever you reach the low voltage, which is approximately in the eight to nine minute range. Go ahead and press this on and do your up and down binding sequence. And we'll go ahead and take it up here. This is your uh, auto takeoff, your 360 flips, and then these are your weird pre-programmed moves. This is your rates. So we'll take it up here and let's fly it around here in the garage. So let's go ahead. Now gyro calibration is both sticks down. This looks rather level here. So both sticks down to the right. I can see the red light flash and it stopped. Let's go ahead and do the auto takeoff. There it is. Very little pitch. That's the lowest rate. Look at that, it's almost nothing. And here's the fixed y'all. It's no different. Let's go to the highest rate. Let's press in. See the y'all doesn't change at all. But here's the highest rate. There is more pitch. It's a little sportier if you want to use the word sportier. That's probably not the right adjective. It's far from sporty, but there is the highest rate. And there's the lowest rate. High, highest rate there, a little bit sportier, so. It's almost impossible to even see because it's not much of a difference. All right, let's do some, it has 12 pre-programmed, which are of course, well, not pre-programmed, but these are, you have a four, eight, and then 12, you count the four ways you can flip. Now I did not get a, an English instruction manual with mine, so I don't know exactly what all these different ones do because I don't, I can't read Chinese. So just do a 360 flip. Oh, you have to, you have to hold it in while you do your flips. Remember that guys. Whoa, that was a pretty good flip. Let's do a back flip. It does sometimes get a little sloppy on its flips, especially forward and backwards because the drone is so long. Let's do a forward one. See? But left and right, I'll show you, is not as bad. See, much better. So if I were doing flips with this drone, I would stick with left and right uh, roll flips. I wouldn't mess with the uh, you know pitch flips because they're so sloppy. And then these pre-programmed ones um, over here on the left, and then you press uh, your direction pad, I think, to start it. And there's one of them. I'm doing a front left bumper. Let's do a right. Some yaw spins. Let's bring it down here. Let's do a forward. That looked about the same. And a back. Oops. I want to crash into the garage and let's do the rear one here it's going to do a little wobbling back and forth and let's try the back one doing right it's going to do a big slow funnels let's try forward it's going to go up and down yeah 
You can just cancel them out by giving it a, a flight input. And let's try down, or back, I should say, back pitch. Let's try that again. It's getting a little out of the view, probably. Let's try down, or back, reverse pitch. Yeah, so that's the moves. You got four on each of these two buttons, and then you've got your four flip directions. And that's pretty much it, guys. But it flies really, really well as long as you're not in the wind. It is a bit noisy. To trim this guy, I'm not going to really mess with it, but you press in the left stick and then the direction you need to trim. And then that, well, I think you have to press it again and exit out of it. That will, uh, that you trim since there's no trim button. That's a new way SEMA was the first one, I think, to go to that style. It actually works quite well, but you do have to get kind of used to it because it's a lot easier just to look for trim buttons. So again, the flight time on this guy, well, I think I got, um, I mentioned it in the table review, but I got up upwards, I think it was close to nine minutes. With about about the seven minute mark, I had the uh, the low voltage light, so it flew quite a long time. Now that was indoors, of course, in my basement, with even less room to fly than this, so I couldn't fly it as aggressively, if you want to use that term. So it is possible that it could be a little shorter if you're flying this thing in a bigger open area. But it shouldn't be a big difference because you really can't fly this drone outdoors unless it's just completely calm. You know, maybe go outside right at dusk when the wind lots of times calms down, you might be able to, but on any normal wind, in normal amount of wind, uh, good luck. And there we crash. Now, I don't crash this drone a whole lot because it's pretty easy to, to uh, fly and it seems to kind of break quite nice. Let's go ahead and let's just do an auto takeoff here. Uh, holding it in my hand, if I can reach over and press the button. Even, even in the tight, um, the tight area, the flying area in my basement, I didn't crash this but a couple of times in the whole flight. And that was only when I was really getting as aggressive as I could with it because it does fly really nice. It really does. It seems odd to say that about a drone that can't fly outside at all, but it really does. The yaw is actually a nice yaw. It doesn't really bother me that the yaw doesn't uh, increase with the uh, rates because it's already a nice fixed yaw that's just fast enough for an uh, experienced pilot, but not too fast for a beginner. But this would make a good drone for someone just starting out if you, as long as you're okay with flying indoors because it's not too aggressive or fast. You're not gonna all of a sudden fly it out of uh, range, you know, or very far away and lose it because a little bit of wind, it's gonna, you're gonna probably lose it if you're a beginner. Um, so that's why you gotta fly it indoors. But what I'm saying is it won't get away from you really quick indoors. And of course you're not gonna lose it indoors, but outside you gotta keep it super close unless it's zero wind or you could lose it. That's the only real downfall I'd hit, say for a beginner. So we still have good battery, the red light solid. Let's go ahead and do a flip. I said not bad. Now as the battery gets lower, you're gonna see the flips on all these drones will get sloppier. As the voltage sag, you can see it there. So if I did a forward or backwards pitch flip, it would really, really, really be sloppy. But do your flips if you're gonna do them early in the battery so that you've got plenty of voltage. This is a 1S LiPo in there, but I don't know the uh, milliamp hour offhand because it is a, a internal integrated battery in there. So unfortunately, if the battery goes bad, you're probably, the drone's probably done. Uh, you'd have to try to rip it open and replace it. Certainly not impossible, but not everybody's gonna wanna do that. But yeah, this, if you're looking for a first drone, you're okay flying indoors. Uh, you like the fact that it's easy to fly indoors and you get a helipad. I say go for it. Just make sure you get it on a good price because I think this thing was a bit pricey. Uh, pricier than I would want to see for something like this. But there are always going to be sales or coupons that make it uh, this stuff cheaper. All right, we got a red LED black, uh, the red LED flashing in the rear. It means we're on the LVC. Should get around two more minutes of flight time here. But I, 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 with all these drones, when you reach LVC, you'll see it's not going to let you flip. 
it says, whoa, the battery's too low. If you do that now, it's just gonna crash. All right, let's go ahead and press the auto landing, which is also auto takeoff button, and we'll bring it down, and we'll land it, and we'll include this review of the Hello Fury 360. Overall, if I could hold on to the drone, I try to toss it up and catch it. Overall, I do like this drone, as I said several times in the review. Um, just make sure you get it for a good price. If you want an outdoor flying drone, this drone is not for you. But if, you're, if you want something you can fly indoors and have fun and take it out on a very calm day, this is a good drone if you can get it at a good price. All right, guys, that wraps up the review. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me down in the comments. Um, and be sure to subscribe, click the bell so you know when I do upload a new video. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.